What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Happy Diwali. While I grew up in a Roman Catholic home, my mom's relatives who were Hindu would always invite us. You know, as kids growing up on the islands, we never understood why the day off and the day before, mom would always make us fast. And when I say fast, I mean no meat whatsoever in respect of the fact that we were visiting a home which was celebrating Diwali. By the way, why is it a V versus a W and a W versus a Diwali Diwali? Anyhow, here are my top vegan vegetarian recipes I enjoy from a day-to-day -day basis. There's going to be two parts, part one now and then part two later on.
got some vegetable oil there and what my dad is doing is rubbing it in his hands just so the sort of um latex the latex or there's a sort of a white sticky residue from the from the shutting and all you have to do first is to um to remove the outer skin it does look kind of jurassic if you look at it with it very thorn like spikes now you cut it it's, it's say in half just cutting it up into pieces now probably like um quarters i think less than quarter maybe eight So now what he's doing is removing the core and that the core part is when the garbage right that part you just put out there yeah that's going to the garbage and then it's just a matter of peeling back the seeds and then what you're gonna do is like it's gonna be like a sort of a cabbage texture and all he's doing is shredding it into into small pieces very labor intensive but it tastes really nice once it's done cooking this is the latex from it so there you can see the sort of milky residue i was talking about if you get that on your clothing or your hands or anything it would stain it for sure it's very sticky as well that is the same thing that's used as lagli yeah but from the tree oh okay this is just some of the seeds that we took out from the um the chatine had a lot of seeds um that variety what this we're going to discard that and i'll show you we did clean some which will make its way into the actual dish as well i'm in the indoor kitchen now we usually cook on the outdoor kitchen because it's so hot and here is the prepared chatine now the lighting isn't the greatest in here and we've had the seeds i have here the seeds some of them it usually have an outer shell which my dad already removed and he cut them in half so we removed some of the seeds and here he grated coconut to make coconut milk because the whole idea is to cook this down in coconut milk so it's going to get that wonderful coconut flavor fully vegan vegetarians you're going to like this one gluten free a wonderful tasty dish though we're in the outdoor kitchen now we're getting started start cooking the chatine in the pot here in a high heat we have about two tablespoons of vegetable oil heating up go ahead and my mom is just going in with some onion and the full list of ingredients i use will be listed down in the description of the video as i normally do now she's just going in with curry powder and you can use your favorite brand of curry powder now if you're doing this gluten free what I may recommend you do is check the label of the curry powder that you use because some of the curry powders they tend to have flour as a filler and a lot of people don't realize that so if you're going with a, a gluten free diet you'd want to pay attention to that the heat is on a medium low now and just cooking out the rawness of the curry so you don't get that rawness later on so now what my mom is doing is adding some water to help cook off that curry. Garlic. Now she's adding some garlic and some scotch bonnet pepper. And that, you can control how much of the scotch bonnet pepper you use in there. Or use any type of spicy pepper that you like or leave it out altogether. It's totally up to you. We're just going to cook that off now till we come back to seeing the, the oil. That we started off with but she's going in now with some anchar some anchar masala this is one of them traditional curry dishes and now she's adding some some roasted jeera which is roasted cumin so you notice all these flavors you're getting from that already from the start and you can tell the water is already burnt off so you're getting a nice thick slurry now 
And what she likes to do is also add a tablespoon of Caribbean green seasoning. I have a recipe for that Caribbean green seasoning on my website. And basically, it's a blend, a sort of a, a puree, or two table, a tablespoon and a half, um, of all the herbs that we like using in the Caribbean. And this is the prepared chatain now. And one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is that it has been washed. So now it's going to go into the pot after the curry has cooked down or fried down as we say. And them chicken and them trying to be in people's video as well. They don't realize they could end up in the pot then. Now it may seem like a lot but it's going to cook down. It's almost like cabbage. It takes a lot longer than cabbage to cook though. Um, so it will seem like a lot but it will cook down and the pot will be big enough. So what we're doing now is adding the seeds, some of the seeds that we saved and we cleaned mm -hmm. to be part of the dish. So all we're doing now is adding salt and again the fullest of ingredients will be listed down below. Kitchen is already smelling wicked. I'll give it a quick stir now <clears throat> just to bring everything together. So we're just getting the coconut milk ready. So you have the grated coconut. My mom is just putting water in there. And then we're gonna squeeze it out to get the coconut milk from it to add to the, the curry dish that we have going on there. She's just squeezing out the, the milk from the grated coconut now because we added a bit of water to help get most of that milk out. And now <clears throat> we're using freshly made coconut milk, but the canned stuff will work just as well. This year we'll squeeze it out one more time and then it will go into the garbage or if you have chicken or ducks or anything, you can feed, feed them with it. So now she's just straining it into the pot here. The heat is up medium high. I'm just straining it so none of the the grated coconut or anything like that would end up in the pot. The whole idea now is to squeeze that out and bring it up to a boil. And this is just the second rinse of the coconut milk that my mom is putting in there now. So if you don't have as much coconut milk as we just went in, you can always put just plain water if you're using the canned coconut milk. So the next step, the next step now is to just bring it up to a boil, put a lid on there, bring it up to a boil, then when it comes, when it comes up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer and slowly cook it anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours it will take to cook to get nice and tender. So there we go, it's come up to a boil now, so this is where we're going to reduce the heat, put the lid back on and let it slowly cook. It's been about half an hour now, so my mom's a little trick. Now, we already put garlic when we started, but she likes to go in with, what is that, three, six pools of garlic um, and continue cooking. It's only been about half an hour so far, but the little trick here is to add some more garlic. Whole grains of garlic have been peeled, but that's her little trick in getting more flavor into this. It's been cooking for about two hours now, and you see most of that liquid is gone. And what my mom just put in there is some pimento peppers. When she gets them on sale, she dices it up really fine and freezes it so that's what you're seeing there it's still a little bit frozen and all she's going to do is allow that to thaw out in there and flavor the entire curry chatain near the end it still has about 10 minutes to 
burn off all the liquid. What my mom is doing here now is putting some more um, jira, which is roasted cumin. Yeah, yeah, she's going to stir it up and let it cook down. It's going to be maybe another 10 minutes or so and it'll be all done. It's all done now. So Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. But it wasn't me. Please say a thanks below in the comment section to moms for demoing this recipe for us. It's vegetarian, it's vegan, gluten-free. The very first thing you've got to do, and I have here about three and a half cups of that frozen um, pigeon peas. It's been thawed out. It's been thawing out for the past couple of hours, so it's completely thawed. But I've got it covered in water, maybe about three centimeters above, um, above the pigeon peas. And you want that to come to a boil reduce the heat to a rolling boil and let that go for about 25 minutes it's going to do two things it's going to help tenderize it but more importantly it's going to get that aftertaste out of the peas it will have a terrible aftertaste if you don't do this and remember we're using frozen pigeon peas as the pigeon peel boils in that water there i'm just going to prepare the other ingredients and i have an onion and about five cloves of garlic i'm going to use some of these bird's eye pepper or chili if you have scotch bonnet, if you have any sort of other hot pepper you like using, you can certainly do that. And one of the key ingredients my mom always insisted using when she's cooking curry peas is tanya. I believe in Jamaica they call it coco yam. And all I'm going to do is, and it's going to be a tough, ah, that part is not all that good. Nice. It's going to be a tough skin. You just want to peel it as you would a potato and if you don't have access to this tanya or coco yam you can certainly use a couple large potatoes and this is just going to help thicken up the sauce or the gravy from the curry peas I'm just gonna peel this out as you can see there isn't much to it and then I'm gonna cut it up into small pieces I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other one once, if you do this in advance, what you want to do is after you chop it up into maybe half inch size pieces, put it in a bowl of water so it doesn't discolor. I allowed it to slowly simmer and boil away there for about 35 minutes. You want to skim off any of that frothy stuff at the top there, discard it. I'm going to go ahead and drain them now and get ready to put in the dish together. I've got a couple tablespoons of coconut oil melting away, coming up to temperature here on a medium flame. I'm just trying to melt it down. I'm using coconut oil because I'm too lazy to go down into the basement for a new vegetable oil. This is what's upstairs right now. You can use vegetable oil if you want. That's cool. Um, right away, I'm going to turn my heat down. As soon as it's melted and it's come up to temperature, turn my heat down to low. And as if we're done with all the other curry um, sort of dishes we've made, we're going to start off with some diced onion on a low heat because I want to sweat and, and bring that to a sort of a translucent color without burning it. And I also have here four cloves of garlic that I just smashed with the knife and uh, it's in pretty big pieces but that is cool. Low heat and let that go for about three or four minutes. Next up I'm going to go in with two of those bird's eye chili or bird pepper that I just broke into half. I want to release the heat from that. That is totally optional as I said earlier. I'm going to go in with some black pepper. Heat's still on low by the way. And I'm going to go in with some cumin seeds. Just a little bit of that cumin seeds. About half of a teaspoon or so of that cumin seeds. And that is what we call jira in, well, in the southern Caribbean anyways. Heat still on low. I'm just going to let that toast and start bringing out those real nice flavors. Heat still on low and I'm going to go in with my favorite curry powder, which just so happens to be my own blend. Look for more details on that coming out soon. It will be widely available. Um, it is a madras sort of blend. So if you're looking for a good curry powder, get something out of the Caribbean, well, other than mine, coming soon. Um, something out of the Caribbean, but a Madras blend, or alternatively, use the curry powder you like using. So I'm just going to let that cook now because you want to cook the raw taste out of that curry powder. Low heat and let that go for about four minutes. A couple more ingredients to go in there before we add back the peas. Some shadow benny. 
and that is called Q Lancho. If you're looking for it in those West Indian stores or Shadow Benny, if you can't get that, you can use cilantro, a couple tablespoons of cilantro. Reserve a little bit for near the end because when it's almost done, we're going to add back some more of that freshly chopped. And here I have the tanya uh, soaking in water, as I said, I'm just going to drain that water out. And we're going to add it to the pot here. You just want to coat the pieces of tanya with that curry. Mix everything together. It is smelling wicked in the kitchen. We've got that garlic, we've got that curry powder, that cumin. We've got so many things happening here. Here and I'm on this thing is going to kick real. Mm -mm, but we ain't go with it. That language is not tolerated. Next up now, crank up your heat to medium high. And we're going to go in with the pre boiled pigeon peas. Stir it well. Because you really want to get all that curry goodness from the bottom of the pot there. You sort of deglaze in the pan now with the moisture that was left back from boiling the pigeon peas. And the reason why I turned up my heat at this point is because we got to go in with the liquid which will cook this and bring everything together. I'm not going to put the salt yet. After it comes up to a boil, then I'm going to go in with salt. But here goes hot water. I'm going to put some more hot water in there. Couple things. Um, if you're looking for this frozen pigeon peas, you can try West Indian groceries, Latin grocery stores, East Indian grocery stores, and the other Asian grocery stores. They all carry it now in the frozen section. The other tip is, um, what is my other tip? Is if you wanted to do this in a slow cooker because it will take about an hour and a half after we top it up with some more liquid um, you can start it like this and then finish it in the slow cooker for a couple hours you'd be good um, I'm gonna toss in a, a third tip here as well if you're looking for the ingredients that I went in here with specific measurements down in the description it will be posted and later on the, the recipe itself printable will be available on caribbeanpot.com it's now come up to a boil, so I'm going to go in with the salt, and again, the full amount of ingredients I use will be listed down in the description of the video. I'm going to turn my heat down to low, because I want this to cook low and slow. I'm going to put my lid on there and let that go for at least an hour and 20 minutes. It's been cooking now just over an hour and 20 minutes. You can see the water has reduced considerably. Just gonna give it a quick stir to show you what's going on. This is where you will taste it for salt, adjust it accordingly, and also taste, like squish some of the peas and make sure they're tender. If they're not tender, continue cooking it for another 20 minutes or so until it's fully tender. I did add a bit more water because I wanted it to cook at least a little bit longer. So in case you need to cook yours a little bit longer, it's okay to add some boiling water to there. I tasted it. It's great for salt. And the big pieces of the tanya, what you want to do is using the back of your spoon, just give it a crush. Just crush it a few of them and that's going to help thicken up the sort of gravy or the curry sauce that we have here. Alternatively, if you are using um, potato instead of that, I would recommend doing that as well. What I would do though, if I'm using potato, I would cut it bigger because remember we've cooked this in total um, since adding water in here. I cooked it for an hour and 45 minutes to be honest with you. Because like I said, I wanted it to be to the point where I will enjoy it, you know? So Chris here, yeah, CaribbeanPod.com. I'm just gonna go in with that chopped shadow benny. If you have um, cilantro, you can do the same thing. Remember to hit thumbs up. We've got that frozen pigeon peas that we made into a curry today. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to leave comments below. I usually answer questions and remarks and everything else the first 24 hours after the video goes live. Girl, I'm going in with two pounds of lentils and these are dried lentils which were washed and it's been soaking in in warm water for the past 15 minutes or so there's no need to soak it overnight the slow cooker here will do its thing and let's take a look at that it's starting to get plump already but 
friends. There's a lot of lentils in there. So this is something you're gonna make, you're gonna have for dinner, you're gonna have for lunch, you're gonna have for breakfast, and you'll still have some over to freeze for next week. And because this is gonna slow cook, we really got to enhance it with a lot of flavor. Some thyme, and that is fresh thyme straight out of my garden. I keep telling all your garden, this profit boy. Because later on, look, thyme from there, pimento pepper from the garden, chopped up. Um, so I got two pimento peppers in there, a couple thick slices of ginger, a medium onion. We need some scallion in there. We need some diced celery in there. You know, the Cindy flavors already eh? is just layers and layers of niceness. You cannot beat it. We need some parsley from the garden again. I'm telling you, you got to plant your plant and so you shall reap. We are not done yet. Black pepper. Yeah, we got to give black pepper a little love up in here as well. So put as much as you can handle. Now you will notice I'm on fresh out of scotch bonnet pepper. So I'm going to have to dig deep, real deep. Because I need that little kick in there. So we got that black pepper in there. We need salt. And later on, we'll adjust the salt, but for now we need uh, some salt just to help bring things together. And I'll be using vegetable stock in there. Some Worcestershire. Get him a nice little dose of Worcestershire in there. Now if you're doing that vegan, read the bottle of the Worcestershire. There's probably some kind of fish business in there. I don't know. I haven't made it, so I don't know. Stewed tomatoes. You need some stewed tomatoes in there as well. And that stewed tomato has green pepper, celery, and onion. We ain't too worried about that. But that tomato and that lentil, everything here yeah, now. Nah. Yeah. Wait, you'll see what I'm talking about. For a bit more body, we've got some carrots. And that is a large carrot that I just diced up into different size pieces. Some small, so it will melt and thicken up everything. And some, after it's done cooking, you'll notice some bigger pieces. That's going to hold its shape. So later on, you'll know, hey, there's carrots up in here too, boy. And being that I have some butternut squash left over in the garden from the garden there that butternut squash is going in there as well and um, <clears throat> I like to add a little bit of fat and that fat is some olive oil some good olive oil there's a couple tablespoons of that nice olive oil in there and we will need some liquid to braise it and to pull it all together vegetable stock Come on, spend that extra two dollars and get a good vegetable stock. You know, Vikey Vai thing. If you're making your own, make your own. We're gonna give that a stir. Then we're gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna go in with another cup of water in here because it seems as though we need some more liquid. That was four cups of that vegetable stock. We got a couple more ingredients I want to add in there. So hold tight. Let me show you. I'm going in with a tablespoon of molasses and that's going to give it that sweet sort of nicety up in there and I still got some of that awesome maple syrup I brought back from from Quebec and one more thing so we got two sweet elements there we need something with a little bit more color and something Caribbean and that comes courtesy of some brown and a tablespoon of brown and um, go to your local Caribbean store and ask them for browning, they will sort you out. Um, but now we really got to give that a good mix here. Yeah? So all you would do now, put the lid on there, crank it up to high, bring it up to a boil and let that go until everything is nice and tender and falling apart. And it's best bare niceness. Now later on we will taste it for salt as I said and adjust it some more. But for now, it's just bare niceness in here. You're going to love this episode of Meat Free Monday. I guarantee you it. Been about an hour and this year some garlic. I forgot to tell you guys earlier. There is about eight cloves of garlic in here. So I'm just going to move that around. Give it a mix after about an hour. Well, you don't necessarily have to because it's one of those things where you would just set it and allow it to go all day while you're at work or whatever. But because I'm home, I give it another stir. I'm going to put the lid back on. And let that continue cooking. It's been six hours on high. If you recall, we started off with four cups 
of vegetable stock and one cup of water. During the cooking process, I did add another cup of water. Remember I told you guys too, we added some garlic in there and I also added some scotch bonnet pepper flakes. I like it a little bit spicy. Take that the time out and the reason why we put the, the pieces of ginger so big is at this point we can remove those as well. Mr. Carrot, get in there. If you want it a bit more shelly or a bit more grainy, obviously you don't cook it for six hours. You will cook it for about five and a half, five hours or so. Taste it for salt and adjust it accordingly. Yo, Meat Free Monday, you're going to love this one, man. We got pumpkin carrots and all that niceties up in there. The last thing we like to do is a bit of that fresh parsley there. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com. One of the easiest things, you know, you set it for, get it, you go to work, you come back home, and then bam, bam, you have a nice little lentil something here. A big bowl of lentil, cold winter's night, you cannot go wrong. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. On high, six hours, as I said. Let me hit all that little zoom. The lighting is a little bit strange today for some reason or the other. A little more greenery there. Enjoy all the week, all right? What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Vibes in up in the kitchen as usual. Have you guys checked out that new community we have? We have about almost 300 people already on there chatting and sharing ideas and all kind of thing. CaribbeanPod.com slash community. You're invited. Meat Free Monday. After teasing this one here on, on Instagram, I think it was. Instagram at CaribbeanPod. If you know, you know now. Vegans, vegetarians, gluten-free, I tell, everybody gonna like this one. Now, all they ain't vegan, all they thinking, wait, they have to be lame. I'll catch all yourself, eh? I don't have lame food. No, Caribbean people don't have lame food. Alu choka, or some of you may just call it, spicy garlic potatoes. You're gonna love this one, man. Community, CaribbeanPod.com slash community. Vibes it up, all right? You are probably wondering why it is Uncle Chris has such a big pot with a little bit of potato on there. That is for me to be able to better show you what's going on. In a nice big pot here, I have three pounds of potato. Use your favorite potato. It just so happens my favorite is Yukon Gold. High heat, covered with water. There's about an inch above the potato with water. And the first thing we're going to do, bring that up to a boil, but we need some salt in there. We're going to bring that up to a boil. Reduce it to a rolling boil and allow it to cook for about 15-20 minutes until the potatoes are fully cooked all the way through nice and soft. In the meanwhile, let's jump over there now. You all know I like using my mortar and pestle, so any opportunity to use it. We've got some garlic hiding back there. And that is the last of my garlic from Spain. You want a nice, lovely flavored garlic. I'm just going to give it a rough, rough chop. Four big cloves of garlic. Yo, I've said it before. You see that Chinese garlic, man? That thing is lame for spice. Try and avoid using that. The cheap, <laughs> but that's about it. More salt. I'm going to use it as an abrasive almost. We've got scotch bonnet pepper, and I sliced one open just to show you guys. Um, wear gloves, eh? And wash your hand with soap and water after. But if you wanted to control the heat a bit, you see the seeds and the white sort of membrane surrounding the seeds. We've talked about this before. That is where most of that heat is going to be. I man want that heat. It's totally up to you. This is supposed to be sp garlicky, spicy. Yo, that is what choker is about, you know. So what we're going to do now is crush that. That's a combination between this and that. Don't, don't get tired. We're going to crush that until it's smooth and we have a lovely paste. But remember, soap and water, please and thanks. You're gonna thank me because you touched the wrong place and papa, fire! Now you notice the rolling boil that we had going there? So it's been about 20 minutes. You will take a sharp paring knife, go through the thickest part, well, the thickest potato down the center and once there's no resistance it means it's fully cooked what we're gonna do now is drain that nice and steamy there now you will notice that I put the pot directly onto the stone counter here if you have a wood or whatever sort of counter make sure you put something to prevent the heat from warping your counter I'm going old school you can use a potato masher but I have what we call a ponga or pounder or 
uh, pestle, wooden. This was given to me about, I think my mom brought this back from Trinidad and Tobago about at least 25 years ago. So this thing is a classic. It's a relic of a classic. And all we want to do is crush the potatoes until there's no more lumps. So it will take a couple minutes. Using a potato masher, I'm certainly, I'm certainly you can get it done faster because it's going to be wider. But all I'm doing, and this is why I use the big pot, to be able to better show you what's going on here. So it's going to take a couple minutes, as I said, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll get to adding the other elements to the dish. So everything is nice and crushed here and here. So I'm just going to scrape this off. We're going to scrape off any of the remaining potato on the ponga or pounder, whatever you want to call it, or pestle. Now we're going to scrape all of that niceness here. And remember, this is going to be spicy, yeah? so make it as tolerable, tolerable as you can have. I apologize for the noise here, the scraping, because everybody always, oh gosh, why he ain't using a wooden spoon? Yeah, this is my show, eh? Fetch all this off. So we've got that in there. Next up, thinly sliced onion. And I'm putting everything in the center here for a reason. We're going to chunk of this. Chunk means we're going to heat some oil, and we're going to pour it directly on here. So these are the sort of, the traditional way, the non-traditional thing I'm going to add to this, I went in the backyard in my garden and I got some fresh chives. And I'm going to add all that chives in there. Yeah, it's fall, but there's still some stuff going on in the garden there. And I'm just going to spread it apart a little bit. So when I pour the hot oil on there, the hot oil will sort of lightly cook and temper all those flavors so you'll get the pepper the garlic the onions the chives everything throughout the entire dish so what i have here is three tablespoons of olive oil heating up once it comes you start seeing whispers of smoke we're going to use that to pour it on here and that sort of step we've talked about before is called chunky and it may seem like a lot of oil but that potato will just suck everything in there and we want it to be somewhat moist so if you want to add some butter in there you can certainly do that and all you would do now is give that a proper mix no kind of lame mix a proper mix please listen to uncle chris we want that garlic and pepper and onions and everybody just is a merriment up in here you know give that a good little mixy mix as i said oh my god chris got a wooden spoon where did he get that from and you guys think i roll in soft or what anyhow alu choka nice spicy garlicky and the thin threads of that onion in there that is why it's key that the onions are nice and thin nobody well here's the thing ladies and gentlemen you've your breath will have a particular vamp to it. So please, get your dentine and wrigglies and everything out of your meeting. I'll put your special person after, all right? I just saying. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Vegan, vegetarians, I tell. What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. What you're looking at is my masala mushroom meat free monday we're live and direct high heat wide frying pan two and a half tablespoons coconut oil you will thank me for suggesting that you use coconut oil it will give the entire dish a lovely undertone of coconut the mushrooms nice big mushrooms and we want high heat because in doing this dish the reason why I'm starting off with the mushrooms and frying them first because I want to give them a little bit of color and I want that caramelization to happen on the edges that's going to bring out the sweetness rather than if we sort of boiled or poached the mushrooms in the curry or the masala sauce and all these are you know this is a great recipe this recipe came about when you know I usually I'm walking through the Costco, nice big bag of pack of mushrooms and some five bucks or whatever. It always makes its way home. I always find that I'm always too late to use it. So you'll notice they're not the greatest quality right now. It's starting to 
to go a little bit south of the border kind of thing. But the point is, at least we get to use it. And Meat Free Monday, you guys are going to love this one, man. Vegetarian, vegan, and any, any mushroom lover will love this. What I like doing here, too, is a bit of salt as well. Nice high heat, though, huh? And in case if you're wondering, there is about a pound and a half or so of mushrooms in here. Just cheap old mushrooms. And you notice the color that we're getting on the edges there. I don't know if the, the camera is picking that up. But that is exactly what we're trying to achieve by, um, by frying these off first. And again, high heat in that coconut oil. And you'll thank me for that. It's been about four minutes now since I put it in there. And I don't know if you guys noticed earlier, I only cut the mushrooms in half. I didn't slice it up and I didn't make it any smaller because I know these are going to shrink down. If you recall, because it was a big pile when we first started. Now that is all the natural juices left back from the mushrooms. We want that to remain in here. So heat still on high, we're trying to burn off all that heat and then that sort of caramelization is going to happen. But for now, just a few more minutes and then we'll, we'll be done with this sort of stage or step in the in the whole masala mushroom process. Gotta love that lovely color that we've got, that caramelization. What we're gonna do is turn our heat down, push that to the side. Our small Caribbean Dutchy pot there is all ready to rock and roll. And I've got there two tablespoons of coconut oil here. We're continuing on that same coconut oil thing. We just need that to melt down. I'm gonna turn my heat to medium. And then we're gonna make the sort of masala and then we're gonna dunk that caramelized mushroom into that masala partner <laughs> vegans are they gonna fall in love with me yes that's gonna swish that oil around it's a bit too much oil i'm gonna remove a tablespoon of oil from there nobody trying to we love the coconut oil but that's too much onion garlic just Thinly slice that onion and I smash that garlic, about five cloves of garlic to be honest with you. We need a little bit of cake, a little bit of scotch bonnet, a little bit of Caribbean sunshine. When is the last time I used that word, ladies and gentlemen? As we've talked about before, this is a scotch bonnet pepper cut in half. We're doing a dissection for this introduction to peppers. You see those, ooh, turn down that heat boy, you're gonna burn your hand. See the seeds and that membrane surrounding the seeds there? That is where the heat lives don't use that if you're concerned about the heat tip number two wash your hands with soap and water immediately after using said hot peppers we're just going to give that a little mixy mix in that warm coconut oil there and this pot dancing like is carnival tuesday behind our music truck but small thing we're just allowing that i'm going to turn my heat down actually to low and we want to soften up that Try not to burn the garlic though, and nobody is trying to eat burn garlic this wrong. As that softens up, we're gonna rock some fresh strong black pepper in there. Along with some, some cumin seeds. That's a little piece of tomato. That going in later. In front is, you want to join the dance. And cumin seeds, we call that jira. That's gonna give it that lovely smokiness, that whole masala vibe is starting from the early now. I'm gonna give that a little stir, and again, low heat, and let that cook, think things still dancing, boy. Four minutes, and here's where we're gonna add our curry powder, and I'm using my own little mixy mix there. Use your favorite blend of curry powder. Now, if you're doing this gluten-free or gluten-friendly, or gluten-free, what am I saying? Pay attention to the ingredients in your curry powder sometimes there might be flour in there i've come across it so i'm just letting you know low heat still though eh? to add a bit more flavor boom bam caribbean green seasoning we have it we use it that there is a combination of all the herbs along with garlic and seasoning peppers and everything else that we like using in the caribbean you know vegan dishes vegan dishes we using it too you're going to love that little addition there. The recipe is available at CaribbeanPot.com. Search Caribbean Green Seasoning. Just going to move that around a bit. Now, a few more things got to go into here to make that lovely gravy or sauce. First, we need salt. 
and we need water. But before we put the water, crank up the heat to medium. Shua! <laughs> Give that a little stir. It looks like a lot of water. It's a cup and a half of water. But there's a reason behind my madness there for adding all that water. Within seconds, you notice it's starting to come up to a boil. That is what we want it to achieve. Here's where we're going to go in with anchar masala now. And you'll need to visit the local Caribbean grocery store to pick that up. And some chopped tomato. That is one Roma tomato. Any tomato will work. We ain't trying to get you to go and get specific ingredients. But the point is that tomato is going to help with two things. Balance of the flavors with the acidity. We've talked about that before. And two, it's going to help thicken up the gravy later on. Give that a stir. And it looks soup like here at this point. But the point is we want to cook that down now to get that rich masala base. To add back the mushrooms too so it will take a few minutes we're going to bring it up to a boil the edges already started it is boiling actually i'm going to turn it down just a tad bit we want that on a rolling boil and let that go four or five minutes it's been about four minutes and what i'm trying to do now is get a summer somewhat of a smooth but yet chunky uh sort of gravy and that is why i'm using my stick blender here totally optional But I just think it's going to coat the mushrooms later on a lot better by doing that. So you notice there's still bits of tomato in there. But for the most part, the onion and the garlic and everything has, you know, become a nice little puree here. You want to mm, taste it for salt and other niceties. And this is where you're going to introduce the mushrooms back to the mix. Bring that back up to a boil. And all it needs now is maybe a minute or two for that mushroom to soak in some of that, that masala in there, and you're done. Just gonna make sure everything is coated with that masala. And like I said, I give it a couple minutes just to soak in everything. Man, kitchen is smelling wicked, boy. I ain't gonna lie. Give that a final little stir. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Masala mushrooms. Gonna go in with a little bit of herbage, and that is some um, cilantro. Some of you call it coriander. Vegan, vegetarian, ital, gluten free. Notice how many bases we covered here today. Get a little piece of roti. Go on CaribbeanPod.com and search Sada roti. First thing we've got to do, and this has been soaking overnight in water. Um, typically, you would do it for about four to six hours, and this is what it would look like dry. This is the dry chickpeas. Here, I've got, believe it or not, two cups of dry chickpeas, which has been soaking overnight in four cups of water, and they're nice and plump now. Just look how big the grains are compared to what we're seeing here. I'm going to drain, drain that out, rinse it, and then this is ready for us to jump into the pot, but it's important that you soak it. That's the only way you're gonna get it nice and tender and to the sort of texture and consistency for that great curry chana and alu or potato with chickpeas. Now, as we go along here, you'll notice that unlike the other curry recipes I've shared with you all, this one, the technique is just a light, slightly different. I've got your two tablespoons of curry powder and one tablespoon of anchar masala. Visit your favorite Caribbean grocery store. They will have that. If you cannot get that, use a teaspoon of roasted jira or roasted cumin. It's the same thing, cumin, jira, that's what we call it. To that, I'm going to add a heaping tablespoon of Caribbean green seasoning to the mix there. Then to that, we're going to add just plain old tap water. And that is three quarter cups of water. And I want to give that a really good mix. And that's gonna become our sort of slurry, our curry base there. And let's look at the niceness you already get in there. And remember, we're getting all those herbal notes. If you're new to Caribbean cooking, that Caribbean green seasoning is basically a puree of all the herbs along with garlic and seasoning peppers and everything we like using uh, when we marinate um, meats 
seafood and as in this case that's a big piece of garlic that's in that Caribbean green seasoning and in this case we're using it on our favorite vegan or vegetarian curry we've got a nice big heavy pot on a medium flame and I like looking I like looking I like yeah I like looking at myself <laughs> I like using olive oil if you want to use vegetable oil um, whatever you like using certainly do that I'm going to turn my heat down to low because that oil is already warm in there and here is where we're going to add that, that curry niceness to the pot there and the reason why I want it on low because I want that to slowly cook and combine and bring all those flavors together it's been going now for about five minutes four and a half five minutes on that low heat and you'll see we start to get separation when we move the spoon like that what we're trying to do now we're going to turn the heat up to medium and we're going to burn it off until burn off all the liquid to really concentrate the flavor of the curry at this point here now what we were doing originally there is cooking off the rawness of the curry i don't know if i mentioned that or not and the other thing i don't think i mentioned is if you're looking for the recipe for the caribbean green seasoning please don't buy the stuff in the grocery stores i'm not trying to hate on the businesses but too much additives and coloring and all that go to caribbeanpot.com you're gonna find our best recipe on there so medium heat and we're gonna sort of burn that off until it becomes more of a thick paste and we start seeing the oil that we started off with I don't know if you guys can see but we've got the oil starting to show up on the bottom there it's getting nice and thick everything has gone dark it's gonna start to sort of clump together so here is where I'm gonna turn my heat back down to low because we're gonna introduce garlic and that's a ton of garlic full um, list of ingredients will be listed down below and the recipe itself will be on caribbeanpot.com uh, within the next month or so the printable version that is but the full list of ingredients down below as I always do so onion garlic and I've got here five of these bird's eye pepper bird's eye chili if you can't handle the heat I mean to say don't rock the heat Uncle Chris love a little heat in here and in my honest opinion a good curry always have a little kick to it beyond the spices which makes up a good curry powder low heat and let that go until the garlic and the onion has softened up you can really see the oil that we started off with on the bottom of the pan there and everything is nice and dark as I said so here's where I'm gonna give it one more little scrape just to pick up and to loosen up stuff on the bottom there and remember those that chana or that chickpeas that we soaked overnight or at least for ours it's been rinsed three times that is going in there now and to help give it some more body to help stretch this some more because when i cook i'm going to cook a large batch i'm going to put it, eat put the rest in the freezer and then your boy eating good the next time i feel from a little curry fix you know then you would want to crank up the heat but before we do so let's give this a quick stir i'm going to crank up my heat now to medium high because a little bit of liquid that was left back in that chickpeas and the potato yeah, I had the potato soaking in water because I didn't want it to go discolored after I um, I peeled and cut them up and you'll notice the potato large pieces because as this cooks that's gonna break down and help give the entire dish that body that thickness that nice thick gravy hey roti begging for some love with this when I'm done you know yeah we're gonna hit it with salt I remember later on you can also taste and adjust that salt so don't go too heavy at this point with the salt but the point is we do need some salt at this point here just to help enhance all the flavors that we got going on in there and you notice how simple this recipe is eh? most of the stuff you have in your fridge already to bring it all together remember we cranked up the heat we need water and I'm gonna put a bit more water just so it covers everything turn my heat up to high and I'm gonna bring that up to a boil because that is where we're gonna start braising this about four minutes later we've got that bubble starting to happen there so we're gonna give it a quick stir we're gonna turn our heat down to a simmer so maybe low medium low we're gonna put the lid on there 
and we're going to leave it slightly ajar. That little crock there is to vent everything. And we're going to cook it until everything is tender and start falling apart. It's been going now for about an hour and 15 minutes and everything is starting to fall apart. Here's where you can do three things to personalize this a bit. One, taste it for salt and adjust it. Now during the cooking process, I did add some more water. I added another cup of water to it. So if you want to add some more water to here, you can certainly do that. And you'll notice all of the chickpeas, while they're tender, and what I did was, I'm just gonna squeeze one and show you how easy it is to break down. What I want to do, because they're so whole, I'm gonna take my potato masher and I'm gonna mash some of these chickpeas. But what I want, I want that potato to hold some of its integrity. And remember we said we kept them big because we know during the cooking process, they were gonna get smashed or break down. So all I'm gonna do is crush some of that, that chickpeas. I'm gonna add another cup of water to this, bring it back up to a boil. And then we're all done. Notice how nice and thick it got there. Got a lovely consistency. I added, did add water. So it's one of those things where you got to keep adjusting the, the liquid volume in here to your own liking. The last thing I'm going to do is parsley. Yeah, conventionally, conventionally thinking you would add shadow benny, which is culantro or cilantro. I like adding, and that's just my personal take on, take on things. I like adding the parsley in here because it sort of adds a different layer of flavor to me that's for me that I like. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Let me see if I can tighten that up a little bit more so you can see what we got going on here. Do give this recipe a try. So simple and it's, you know, it's something very traditional for the most part. This is the way we would have done it before there was all that canned chickpeas or tin chickpeas that we would use. A lovely recipe man, vegan, vegetarian. Oh, if you're doing this one gluten free, pay attention to the curry powder that you use. Some of them, some of them tend to have flour as a thickener and a filler in there. So be mindful of that, all right? And today's recipe, we're just using green peppers. Now these are Trinidad and Maruga scorpions. So I'm just gonna take one of these, just one of these, and I'm gonna go in the back and I'm gonna pick a couple more scotch bonnet peppers. So there is that Trinidad and Maruga scorpion. I've got two scotch bonnet peppers. I've got a habanero pepper. And I've got two Fatali peppers, all of them very hot. This is probably one of, I think it's the second hottest pepper in the world, the Trinidad and Morocco Scorpion. So that's why I'm only going with one of them. What is that lid doing there? You need to be in the recycling, buddy. Anyhow, these are the five, three, six peppers we'll be using today. What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. You've heard of pepper choker. We've done pepper choker. Today something a little bit different. We're gonna take those peppers, but we're gonna add another ingredient. And you know, I'm calling it onion choker only because the predominant ingredient is gonna be onions. So we have the same sort of concept, the same sort of idea behind pepper choker, except we're gonna load it up with onions. When you're eating your curry dishes and you have this on the side, this condiment here, I'm telling ya. Check this one, you're gonna love this one, man. Onion choker. Yeah, I call it onion choker as my recipe. Eh -eh. Oh, this so. You know, typically you guys would see me doing this outside on my propane grill or on my charcoal grill, my, my coal pot. But today I'm doing it indoor just because I know many of you don't have access to, to, to grilling outside. So all you would do, and this is why I picked the peppers with the stems. I don't know if you guys can see that there. The stem is on there. Ah, too close. But anyhow, the focus isn't the greatest right now. All you want to do is sort of char or blister the peppers, and that's going to impact. Notice that char that I'm getting there? And it doesn't take long. Turn the fan on over your stove, char them up, and then we're going to get ready to make in this wicked onion choker. 
Now, as you saw when we were in the backyard there, we harvested four different varieties of hot peppers, and they all have unique flavors. So this is why we, um, we are using four different types of peppers. The other thing is, if you notice, I'm using metal tongs to hold the peppers. Keep in mind that will warm up and sooner or later it will get to your hand. So you may want to take breaks or wear um, mitts or something. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that if you don't have a gas grill, you can always put these in the oven, high heat, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and roast them off if you really wanted to. So you have options. Uncle Chris giving you options, man. You'll need a mortar and pestle or a food processor. Garlic. Tons of garlic. So you've got three and three, six and three, nine, ten cloves of garlic. Your bread will be ripe after eating this. So please don't go and try and snuggle up to anybody. We need sea salt. And then, what we need to do, now wear gloves at this point here, Uncle Chris is a pepper specialist. They don't burn me anymore, they used to. Wrap the stems, that goes into the rubbish, and the peppers go in here. Now remember, we already blistered these peppers, so please wear gloves or you will pay for it. You don't want to touch a piggy or anything after, so wash your hands with soap and water, even if you wore gloves. So all the peppers are in here now, and all we got to do is crush that. One thing I forgot to mention, if all you have, I, I'm blessed. I have a garden and I have a variety of peppers in my garden. If all you have is scotch bonnet pepper, rock the scotch bonnet pepper. If all you can source habanero peppers, rock the habanero peppers. It's totally up to you. And I like placing my hand over there. Again, wear gloves, please. And all we're going to do, and the reason why... We put the salt in there. Well, we do need salt in it, but the reason why we put the salt in here, it's gonna work as, a, as an abrasive to help us really get this into a nice paste. And in the case of a true pepper choker, the main ingredient would be the peppers. In this case, since I'm calling this my onion choker, this is why I'm only using a small amount of peppers. I want the majority of the ingredient to be thinly sliced onions. And the onion of choice for this recipe is a red onion. And the reason why I like using the red onion, it is, it's got a nice sweetness to it. It's gonna chop off the top and the bottom, down the center, take that skin off that all goes into the compost for the rubbish whatever it is you do with your scraps mix for good um you can stock as well too but that's something for another day that's not for today and nice and thin we're almost there i assure you so what we're going to do now is give that a good mix, make sure everything is incorporated. I notice there's a bit of chunkiness, but for the most part, it's broken down. So after I've given that that little stir, I apologize for the little scrapey noise there. We're gonna dump all that onions. We're gonna top it with the onions at this point here. We don't wanna mix it yet, because we have a final step before this becomes the ultimate condiment for your next curry cue. When you're eating that curry chicken or curry goat or curry shrimp or curry potato or curry bygone, anything along those lines, you want this in your life. And that final step is what we call chunky. And we're going in here now with a lot of oil, and I'm using olive oil. You want about a cup, three quarter of a cup to a full cup of olive oil. You're thinking, Chris, there's a cardiac arrest waiting to happen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, use in moderation. Did I just say moderation? Well, moderation. That's the accent. Don't worry about it. Anyhow, two things will stand out with this choker. The crispiness of the onion and the flavor it will absorb and the flavor it will impart on the choker. And two, the oil. That oil is a little something that will be drizzling over everything. I guarantee you that. So in goes some more of that oil, yeah? And olive oil. As soon as you start seeing whispers of smoke, you're ready. We're going to pour that scorching hot oil all over the onions. 
and I want that. The reason why I like doing it this way rather than mixing it and stirring it up and then hitting it with the hot oil is because I want that to sort of gently cook the onion a bit um, just to take some of that rawness out of it. That step there, that heat that oil, pour it on there, that is what we know as chunky. So we're just going to give that a stir now and that oil is going to do magic in here. Just look at that niceness. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I remember ladies and gentlemen, this is not so much about heat as a true pepper choker. This is about the onions. This is about that condiment that Uncle Chris is going to introduce you guys to today called onion choker. Well, my take on onion choker anyways. And this is perfect for those people who don't like stuff too fiery. All I'm going to do now is pour that into a jar. Let that sit for an hour or so. Let everything come together. And it's pure niceness here. You can save this in your fridge. Put it into a clean glass container. You can save it on your countertop. Wherever you want. And the next time you do your pilau. Oh gosh. Your rice and peas. Just about anything getting hit with this here. Yes. Just look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And that oil. I told you guys about that oil. You're gonna be drizzling that oil on everything. I guarantee you that. Sup <laughs> soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene? Irene. And how I like to store it, I have my clean glass container and I'm just gonna pour that in there. And whenever I want some, that's gonna be waiting for me. It's easy as that. To give the recipe a try, all right?